Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to How Do We Get Here, <laughs> where we try to solve some of life's basic problems that people seem to make it really big problems, but they're real simple. Mm -hmm. This may be a little more complicated. This is about initial conversation we're going to have is about dating and what women want for men. And of course, I can't get into that subject unless I bring in my girl, who is my guru, my therapist, <laughs> Miss Della. <laughs> how you doing, Miss Della? How you feeling, baby? Hey. <laughs> hey, how are you? It has been so long. I'm so happy to talk about this topic, too. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I had to bring you in because people, I was just talking to Miss Della earlier about my niece. She was, she's having issues. She's 28. And she's like, I can't find a, a good man. And again, she, same thing women say to me all the time. I got a good job. I'm a good girl. I, I, I got great credit. I got my own job, my own car, my own house, and he still can't find a good guy. Mm -hmm. So this particular one we're starting off with is for you guys. So you'll know. <laughs> and, you know, at the end of the win, we're going to have you guys do some work, too. But, you know, y'all can't go out here dating willy nilly. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is a different age. You know, when I was dating, things were a little bit more simpler. Uh, but it's gotten much more complicated now. So I, that's why I got Miss Della here to have that conversation. And and I, I'm just, whew, I, I'm just going to ask this very initial question. What do women want <laughs> from men? Very simple. <laughs> I know it's, it's more, more complicated, but I just asked that simple question for the brothers out there and the fellas out there is going to say, I'm out here struggling and trying to give them what they want. You don't even know what they want. So mm -hmm. I'm starting off there. What mm -hmm. women do want? Oh, I think that that is a really loaded question. Um, I think that women can, women definitely are complicated, but the foundation of what we want is providers and uh, protectors. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then deeper than that is uh, emotional awareness and emotional intelligence. I think that not just men, but people in general are work, walking around with so much unresolved trauma, um, mm -hmm. unprocessed trauma, um, unprocessed emotions um, within themselves that it complicates relationships. And it makes it more difficult to navigate interpersonal intimacy when you don't know how to be vulnerable. Um, and so I think that women and men are both are both equally looking for emotional intelligence and a, emotional availability. And people don't know how to do that nowadays. Wow. <laughs> and, and that's probably why we hearing all this crap on on the Internet. Women ain't shit and men ain't shit. <laughs> It's just like, no. Okay, guys, <laughs> women and women and men are, they are the shit. They are the <laughs> shit, not they ain't shit. Mm -hmm. The problem is if you ain't shit or you're fucked up, being <laughs> real, <laughs> how are you going to find somebody that not as more fucked up than you are? Mm -hmm. So I guess the first thing, like Ms. Della said, you got to kind of understand where you are in the dating yes. game. Yes. So it, it's just like, so women, you, you, you can't be confusing coming to a woman and think that somehow she's going to straighten you up. You got to be straight. Being in a relationship doesn't solve, at least from my perspective, does isn't the answer to anything. You have to be happy with yourself first before you should even begin dating anyone else. Um, and if you don't like you, kind of dating someone that likes you doesn't resolve the emptiness that you feel within yourself. And I think that... Um, I think that women today have become their own providers because, you know, there was points in society where, um, depending on the culture, there were some dynamics that we had to navigate. Um, but men, men do need to catch up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we, we're keeping it, we're keeping it real. We're not, eh, I, I, I know you have to keep it real, you know, keep it professional <laughs> me I, hey hey i'm here too many women and too many men really a lot of women mm -hmm. and men complain about you know it was like wh why men can't grasp what we want mm -hmm. and you know and i'm like you asking me i'm like I, I don't know i mean guys tell me well women don't understand what we what we need mm -hmm. okay y'all obviously ain't talking or oh, oh, what the hell are you doing i mean <laughs> and i keep telling guys on a side note like Looks is not going to determine your relationship. No. She could look a certain way. She could act a certain way. But until you really get to know someone, mm. you don't know them. 
So you have to have a plan in place of what you're looking for. And you should really see that person in all seasons of life because you don't know when we're dating somebody in the honeymoon phase or the happiness, oh yes, they're the best thing in the world. But when life gets hard, when they have a job loss, um, a housing crisis, there's a, a grief or a loss in their family, what do they look like then? How are you showing how are they showing you who they are then? Dating someone in all seasons of their lives really shows you who they truly are. And I don't think that people are patient enough sometimes to to walk that journey with someone. Um or they're shocked when that person does have a tight, tough time in their life. They're like, oh, I don't know who this person is anymore. Um, okay, have we taken our time dating a little bit and asked kind of more of the right question um, and then waited versus, and when I say waited, I mean watching that person. You know, actions are speak louder than words. What is that person actually showing you versus what is it that they're telling you and kind of operating with a level of discernment when you're dating someone? Because we think that we can, we're going to date them and change them. Oh, yes, I'm going to love them into changing. <laughs> no, that person, no, <laughs> this is not how that works. <laughs> and, and you know what, Ms. Dell, I got I to gotta add this point. I hear so many women, a lot of women, 20, 50, they say the same thing. Oh, I can make him what I want him to be. I can change this man and make him. I see him here. I see him as a blueprint, but I can go ahead and fill him in the way I want him to be to, to be fit my needs. Mm-hmm. Women, you can't change men. I'm mm-hmm. saying that right now. Men, you understand that, but women cannot change men. They want to, yeah. if a man wants to change ladies, they have to change on their own. Yeah. Or they will want to change. But you just mm-hmm. can't go in here and just, you know, stop by, you know, some hardwood store, hardware store, and then buy stuff and put them together. That's not going to work. It's never going to work. And if you got to be careful about this, ladies, if you do change him, he may not still end up with you. Mm. Got to be mm. careful about that. Because I know a lot of women, I'll put all this work and I'll put 10, 15 years of him and he never married me. Now he, he left me and then he went and married somebody else five months later. Mm-hmm. Well, he was he was never yours in the first place. And fifteen years later, you haven't he haven't put a ring on it or even or tried to. You, mm-hmm. No, it's, it's no. no. That that's that's never the answer. Anyway, I think that men decide to change based upon what how they feel in a uh, in a relationship. If they feel like they have the capacity to be your provider, to be your protector, um, kind of what space. I think that you know we need to create more space in relationships for emotional uh, vulnerability. And we don't, we struggle with that because emotions can be uncomfortable. What do you really do with love? What do you do with hate? What do you do with disappointment? Or, you know, when you're frustrated with your partner and then deciding that they are worth navigating that tough season with. But a lot of people give up. They're like, okay, I'm not dealing with this no more. And that's okay because boundaries are healthy to have. It's okay to have some boundaries and limitations things along those lines but I'm talking about capacity here and what is it that you have the capacity to help that person navigate through all seasons of of their lives and I think as a society we give up really quickly now love is not the same as it was 20 30 40 50 years ago dating is not the same either Um, I think now with the generations coming up there's more emotion in a relationship Whereas prior to, and this may sound a little judgmental, it was just, can you pay my bills and keep a roof over my head and have some kids? That was the extent of what was needed. Whereas now um, society is pushing towards more emotional awareness. And I think that men haven't always had the opportunity to be emotionally aware and to talk about their feelings. Um, And then not only just talk about their feelings, but then process the feelings too. Um, And I think women need to be mindful uh, of that too. Society has allowed us to be more emotionally vulnerable, to kind of expect emotion from a woman, um, from women. And I think that we don't do that enough for men, creating that space. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. And, and growing up, um, we weren't taught to deal with emotions. We were taught to be providers. You know, in my generation, it was like, you know, get out there, find a job, be a good provider, don't be a bum. Take care of your responsibilities, and you you squirrel or, or crush or hold down our emotions because 
well, y'all know what, what are you this are you that so men feel bad that's why men don't really talk to each other about emotions like that we, we mm -hmm. kind of keep it down keep it tampered down because then we deal with other ways not healthy ways but we deal with other ways and that normally rears his ugly head when the pressure becomes too much mm -hmm. so who do you take it out on you take it out on themselves and they take it on you. So mm -hmm. that that's what needs to change. And we as men need to get more emotionally in touch. I, I'm not saying you cry every time something happens. You know, you go get some tissues and eat bonbons and drink and eat ice cream or drink beer all the day and drink whiskey. But to have a healthy relationship with your emotions, you have to be a total person. So you're not just a provider, but you emotionally can provide too. And she can provide for you. So you guys can work together in tandem as a team. You know, yes. so that's something that we definitely got to work on. And yes. it, it, it's just going to take time. Um, so what so to answer the question, though, what do women want? Emotionally vulnerable and intelligent men. Tell me what's going on with you. Use your words. <laughs> <laughs> um, and don't get angry or frustrated or kind of shut it down anymore. And I think that women, I think more women want men that are emotionally intelligent. Um and have that capacity and we just don't see that and so it's frustrating to date a man who only thinks that his job is to be a provider or only thinks his job is to be a protector when no it's so much more like you said we have to work in tandem we're a unit when we're dating we're or when we're married we're a unit there's mm -hmm. that commitment that there's that respect there's that love and there's that honor and loyalty and if you don't know what honor loyalty commitment and love either feels like within yourself as a man how are you going to give it to somebody else and you know Miss Della that's a very good point and then we got to deal with the elephant in the room if you weren't brought up in an intact home mm. so you only saw your mom's side of everything because your dad wasn't involved whatever, how, whatever reason it was you're going to pick up more of the woman's vision of a relationship than you would mm -hmm. from a guy because so now you're kind of confused so now you're going out in a relationship going looking like for women or relationship and you just have basically her side of it mm -hmm. so now i hear a lot of guys oh the women bitch complain a lot mm -hmm. and then i ask that question what what did the bitch complain about to them oh well you know she want me to spend more time less time on the on the computer and less time playing f video games more time with her she don't see my point of view i said mm. I said, again, you're looking at it from your needs, your wants. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's when you have to step outside yourself. And that's when the emotional immaturity kicks in mm -hmm. when it comes to men. Because we don't understand. Because we don't, mm -hmm. we didn't, again, go back to handling emotions. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to handle our emotions. Again, it's the flight or fight thing. It's yeah. not sit back and just rationalize and do that. No, because you, you weren't taught that. Because if you're not taught that in, in your home, mm -hmm. school's not going to teach that to you. Society's not going to teach that to you. So now you hang around a lot of other confused guys who were raised in the same situation, <laughs> single moms. And, 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 and let me say this, single moms do a great job because they have to. Because, again, somebody has to take care of this kid. So they're doing the best they can. And that goes back to the fathers out there need to be more involved in the kid's life. I always say this. When you have a kid, you are tied to this woman forever. Mm. So you can't just say, oh, well, it didn't work out. No, no it didn't work out with her. But you, it needs yeah. to work out with your with your son and daughter because mm -hmm. ultimately they're the ones going to suffer the, the most when it mm -hmm. comes to that. And when they grow up, they do grow up. So mm -hmm. it's not like, I, you know, I don't even worry about them. They'll figure it out. No, they, they'll figure it out and they'll find all those hard knocks, all those mm -hmm. hard lessons. Nobody wants to kids. Nobody wants to teach the kids. Oh, go out there and find out the hard way. No. The, you could not survive way. because yeah. how many... How many women have you talked to in your practice who dealt with guys because they think if he put his hands on me, he still mm -hmm. loves me because she's seen that in her relationships. Mm -hmm. She's seen her mm -hmm. mama go through that. Her mama mm -hmm. went through that, so that got to be normal. And everybody around her has done the same thing or gone through the same thing, so it's normal. Mm -hmm. Ladies, that's not normal. And men, it's not normal. It's not normal for anybody to put their hands on anybody. Just say that. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mature and deal yeah. with your issues and deal with yeah. your emotions. You know, yes. so it, it's it's important that you guys understand that. And mm -hmm. it, again, this is just the first part of it because this is a long process. But we <laughs> want you to open your minds and think about other ways of dealing with emotions and dealing with certain things. Mm -hmm. You know, and and of course that goes back to I'm gonna drop this in your lap. What does everybody need to do before they even think about dating anybody? <laughs> oh, that's. <good. laughs> I think that they I think that they need to unpack their own journey in life 
people and love themselves and honor themselves before they begin dating anyone. I don't care. Have you sat with yourself? Do you see your thoughts? Do you hear your thoughts? Do you feel your feelings? Do you really have the capacity to even date someone? Because if you're not healthy, you're not going to enter into a relationship healthy and a relationship is not going to then turn around and make you healthy. Um, and I mean emotionally healthy and emotionally strong and things like that. Yes, your partner can help balance you out, but you should be okay by yourself because not every relationship will turn into marriage. And so do you even know how to end a relationship from a healthy perspective and have those boundaries in place and not lose a sense of self-worth when your relationship ends, right? So getting right with yourself. <laughs> and I would naturally, I think everybody should come, you know, sit down <laughs> on the couch uh, <laughs> and, and kind of unpack what your early childhood experiences were. You know, like you said, growing up in a single parent household definitely plays a part in how we view relationships and are we really viewing them from a healthy perspective? Um, some of the things that we learned were from survival. If if you're if we're in a single parent household, you navigated the world from a from a different perspective out of survival. You needed to keep the food on the table and the roof over your head. And so maybe you didn't have enough experience with emotional vulnerability so you just see it kind of um you see it differently and so unpacking that so that you can enter into your next relationship from a healthy perspective damn that oh you <laughs> said a mouthful and people got a lot of y'all y'all got a lot of work to do right, that's what we're saying we're saying don't rush out there and look for somebody to complete me because ladies and gentlemen no person going to complete you you need to be in a relationship as a complete person I hear so many times from women, women all the time, very, very few men, but a lot of women. Oh, he completes me. He fulfills my life. He's my everything. No, no, lady. No, baby. Mm -hmm. No, he's not your everything. You're your everything. <laughs> yeah. And you're just trying to bring somebody to enhance your life, not some, someone to complete your life. Understand mm -hmm. it, that you're, this is a journey. So yeah. along the way, some things could happen. But if that, God forbid, something happens to that person, do you just crawl up in the ball and just say mm -hmm. it's over? Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> you don't, you don't, and, and so that's why I said th this is this is just a, a opening. A, we're opening the door to relationships and dating, mm -hmm. and you know, this lady here. <laughs> how do we get? How do you, how do the people get in touch with you, Miss Della? So I am from. I have my own private practice, August Rose Health Center. I'm a licensed fully licensed and CARF accredited in the state of Maryland only. So you can just go on our website, augustrosehealthcenter.com, or you can find us on social media at August Rose uh, Health Center on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the things, right? <laughs> all of those things. And we are actively accepting clients for individual counseling, medication management, um, and other life services as well. <laughs> Great girl. That's that's what I want them to know. There's help out here. You just have to mm -hmm. seek it. It's not gonna find you. You have to go seek for it. Seek yeah. the help. Seek to heal to heal yourself. Because if mm -hmm. not, you'll be stuck in the same rut that you're in. And we don't want you in a rut. We want mm -hmm. you to be healthy and happy and find your Mr. Right and Mrs. Right and live a happy life. So mm -hmm. <laughs> with that, we're gonna end this episode of How Do We Get Here? And you know what to do. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel hit the little button and this is again the initial start of this conversation that we're going to get a little more deeper into so with that ladies and gentlemen please and blessings till next time